Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're wondering where we are currently, I am in my living room, which is currently undergoing a major transformation, which I couldn't be more excited for. But I was sitting here with my friend who's working across from me, and I'm like, do I film? Do I record? Do I write this down? And I'm just so comfortable here. And then there's also this storm that's brewing in the background, which let me show you. So that's currently our environment. And this is the setup of how I have my phone. And this is my friend here, Larry. Hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I kind of um, want to keep it real with you guys per usual. And I have some cards pulled. I have the astrology chart pulled. Um, I already looked at it. I already have my notes and I'm going to be sharing that with you. So we're going to keep things per usual as we normally do with the Monday through Wednesday, Wednesday through Friday, Friday through Sunday. I was sitting here looking at these cards and I'm like, wow, this is so profound. This is so, um, the message like really applies and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So yeah. Um, let's go ahead and start. So this reading covers July 22nd, 2019. At the time of me filming this, and at the time of you watching this, probably, Mercury is currently retrograde and was in the sign of Leo, now moving back into the sign of Cancer. And what this is doing for us this week and what this has already started to do is it's pulling us back into the mindset where we're asking ourselves again, yet again, where do I belong? Is where I currently am existing, where I currently am, does it support me? Am I thriving? Do I have everything that I need in order to give the best of myself to the world? And if I don't have what I need, what, what do I need in order to make that happen for me? And also tweaking my expectations of myself because if I don't have what I need, then I can't give more of myself. And that's something that you guys have been seeing and that I have been seeing and I've been feeling. And that you've been saying that you've been feeling the same thing. There's a few messages that came through that already came through as I was sharing, going through the cards and sharing what I saw with my friend. And I see um, a lot of us kind of being kind of stuck in status quo or stuck in this mindset or stuck in this space. And it's making us question why, 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 who am I, what's going to happen, what is happening, what's happening within me, what's happening around me. And we were laughing because it was like, as we're stuck in this, stuck in the mud, literally this is the card that kind of represents this entire week, stuck in the mud. As we're stuck in this muddy space, I saw like a bubble and this bubble kind of pop up and it pops and it smells like sulfur and you're just in your brain and you're like, how could this, could this be any worse? Like, you know, it's bad enough as it is. And then this thing pops and now I have to deal with the stinky smell. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before. But that's kind of what I'm seeing across this week or maybe in our life or your life is, okay, this is where I'm at right now. Could it be any worse? Could it be any better? And then something happens and you're like, wow. <laughs> so I think Mercury retrograde has a lot to do with that because it has, it usually has a tendency to kind of pull things up from the, from the ground and present them to you. And you think like what could go wrong is going to go wrong, like Murphy's Law. But also, we want to keep in mind that it's not just Mercury retrograde, it's Saturn retrograde, it's Pluto retrograde, and all of these planets are working to kind of tweak our brains, tweak our lives in such a major way. And I say tweak because in the eyes of the universe, it's so like minor, but in our lives, it feels very major. And I really want to, um, I really, I'm not, not co-sign, but I really want to support you guys in saying that from one human being to the next human being to the next human being, that in the eyes of the universe, yeah, it can seem so light, it can seem, seem so small, but for us, these issues and these obstacles can feel unsurmountable, and they feel really frustrating and really disappointing, but the universe is still saying, you know what, you have to keep going, and there's a reason why you're being slowed down, there's a reason why you're here at this current moment, and when you learn to slow down when you learn to work with this you will see the blessing in the current situation and the current circumstance and find the gift that's within that and even as i'm saying that i'm like jess take your own advice <laughs> so what i'm seeing for this entire week the cards that i've pulled are eternal love sensitivity stuck in the mud 
divine timing, trust in your efforts, transition and initiation, and the queen of pentacles and the sun. For so many of you guys, you're feeling that you're feeling yourself being pulled to something. And this something can feel like the impossible. Or you're in a space right now where there's a lot of love and a lot of light and you're actually celebrating. You know, it almost feels like celebratory for you to be in this space of let me just enjoy the status quo. And if that's the case for you, then that is your message. The message is, is that it's okay and it's good and divine for you to enjoy the present circumstance. But there are a good portion of the Bahati Vibe Tribe and a good portion of us walking this earth that are really frustrated with our current, current circumstances. And a part of that is, you know, there is a pull and it needs to be um, validated that what you're experiencing and what you're feeling is very real. And this pull that you feel, this vision that you have, this um, move that you want to make, this thing that you want to experience, this feeling that you want to feel, it's there for a reason. You guys keep hearing me say that again and again. And you can feel the light of it, but it's a slow and steady progression. And the thing is, is that if we take this huge leap, if we take this huge jump, as is in our current you know, um, thinking that we're ready, thinking that we're there, or thinking that others might be there and ready because we that's something that we want so badly, we desire it. I just don't, I don't, the, the, the cards, the universe is clearly saying that there's a lot of things that are being reworked and to force it and to push it and to expect more from others or to expect more from a circumstance, you're going to get less from that circumstance than what is needed in order to make it grow to thrive for longevity. So divine timing is so important here while things are initiating, while things are transitioning. That is so important. And instead of looking at the current circumstance and being defeated and disappointed by it, trust in your effort, trust in what has already occurred, trust in your what you're trying to build and let the path that is taking you up and like to this point. Trust that it is helping to evolve you to become your highest and greatest self and don't abandon all your efforts because it doesn't you don't see the reward right away. This week, for some reason, is very slow. I'm getting a lot of energy that is very, very slow and very, and it's not just this card of being stuck in the mud. It's as I was looking at the chart, everything is kind of slowed down and, and um, you know, pulled to a, a minimal. Like you want to go 60 miles per hour, you need to go 25 because you're moving through, you know, a school zone or something. So we want to respect that. Now, Monday through Wednesday, your resilience is getting tested. We're seeing one ring circus, calmness, medicine woman. You're on the right path, which that's so strong. That's a really strong method message here. The knight of cups, the devil, and the seven of wands. And then carnation, follow your passion, resilience, and strength. Now, as I was telling my friend earlier, it's almost like a person who's walking through the desert. They have all of their resources that they need at their disposal, but it's not like if you're going through the desert, you're going through a time in your life where normal resources might not be available to you or your resilience is getting tested and you in your mind, the, the universe, the divine can say to you, like, of course, you're going to make it through the desert. Like you're built for this. You in your mind could be questioning, can I make it through? Am I going to make it through? Eric is coming down. So you might see him in the background. Say hi, Eric. <laughs> I'm currently <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of people in my space right now, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but you're, you could be asking yourself, like, am I going to make it through? Um, do I need to rely on other people? Do I need to ask for help? Um, and there's, there's two sides to this coin. I'm seeing some of you guys actually asking for help and relying on others to not take on everything by yourself. This isn't the universe or your friends or other people, you don't have anything to prove to anybody. So if you don't have anything to prove, why are you choosing to do this by yourself? You know what I mean? Meanwhile, the others, it's you're almost required to do it by yourself. And this is, again, you know, you might have to go it alone and to receive confirmation that Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Wednesday, you're you need a little bit of clarity, you need a little bit of um, support and um, um, the universe, like a, a clear message, a clear signal saying like, look, your environment might not support the reality, which is you currently are on the right path. There is a pull here. There's, there's these two cards that are really sticking out to me, resilience and strength in the desert. 
and also the seven of wands. And this is, okay, I'm really, my patience is really getting tested. My strength is get, really getting tested. I'm thirsty. I need, I need more for myself. But even in that, to exert too much of yourself, you're going to exhaust yourself. If you truly are working, walking through the desert, to exert yourself during the times where it's the, the hottest, you're going to dehydrate. So it's like moving from a space of calmness and going to, in order to go it alone, in order to do it by yourself, you have to almost kind of um, look at your resources and look at what you currently have and still get pulled, pulled from that because there is the, and use your magic, use your intention to observe, to know your strengths, to know your weaknesses. And the way that you can see if you're, what, where your strengths are or your weaknesses are is sometimes self-examination and to be honest with yourself. Meanwhile, while you're self-examining and you're seeing the good and the bad or what you can work with and what is working against you, um, you're still getting pulled to this like higher purpose. And this is so karmic. We've been seeing the devil card a lot lately and it keeps showing up and it's showing like there's this strong pull is it an obsession? Is it a possession? Is it something that you've committed yourself to? Did the, did the universe make that bind? Did the universe make that tie? Or did you make that tie? So I'm really, I'm really curious to, to feel or to hear what it is that you guys are feeling with the devil card. You know, this commitment that you've made, is this something that you've made for yourself? Or did the universe kind of make it for you? Like, what is the devil card for you? And why is it that do you, you know, why is it that you, you really do feel like you're, you know, doing this alone? Are you comfortable with doing this alone? Are you doing this on, like you chose to do this by yourself? Or is it time for you to ask for help? Are you so stubborn and set in your ways that you can't ask for help? So there's a lot of questions that I have at the start of this week. And I think that the reason why there's so many questions that are coming through that I want to ask you guys is because it's almost like Monday through Wednesday, we are being called to ask ourselves these questions. So one ring circus, does that make you feel good? Does that make you feel calm and centered? Do you feel like you're on the right path? Again, I'm doing it again. Like I just feel like we're asking you know, these questions again. So I'm wondering if that's something that you guys are experiencing and that's what you're feeling. And if so, let me know down in the comments. Now, Wednesday through Friday, Wednesday through Friday, we see storm fields. We see trust blossoming new beginnings and a fresh start, the judgment card, the page of cups, the three of swords, maple relationship balance, and sunshine shine forth. Now, this is something that we're experiencing here currently in New Orleans. We have storms every day. And when the storms come in, they can be so intense. But the last thing you want to do is go out into that storm when it's raging. And this goes back to the original message that it is that I'm seeing this week, which is don't, you know, Instead of putting yourself in a space where you are vulnerable for no reason, you kind of want to hunker in, you kind of want to bunker, bunker, bunker down until the storm passes. What that storm does in your life, again, this is a metaphor, but what that storm does in your life is it's clearing out. It's clearing out the chaos, it's clearing out the air, it's clearing out the energy around us. And this is things that we can't control. This is from circumstances, this is from the environment, this is from the divine. When that happens, realize that once the storm passes and even within that storm you are blossoming within that current space and the sun will shine again the light will show again but it's helping to create and restore balance because without that storm it would be literally desert land and that's what we saw monday through wednesday we're seeing you know if we're in a desert right now then the storm seeing a storm come through is actually the biggest blessing because it's going to bring a lot of rain a lot of purification a lot of clarity because it clears out the air if there's a huge dust storm it's the storm and the rain clouds that are going to beat that dust out of the air so that you can see so that you can breathe clear again it may not seem like it in the time because the storm can kick up kick up a lot like a lot of electricity a lot of power a lot of storm surges a lot of emotion but again, it's all helping to create balance. Um, there's card right here, this new beginnings and a fresh start. I think this is even more confirmation. I see this with anytime you're seeing with the judgment card, it's almost like a call to action that comes from our heart. It comes from other people's heart and it's just sparked. And that's what starts this new fresh start, this new journey. Do I see it as a total new beginning? For some of us, it is a total realization that I can't continue on as I did. 
And maybe that's again from the start of this week, Monday through Wednesday, where we're kind of asking ourselves these questions. Is this what I want? Is this who I am? What am I doing? Am I doing this by myself? Am I better off by myself? Do I need to ask for help? Is someone else going to show up? These things are going to be make, going to make themselves known. For some of you guys, again, this is a total new start, a fresh start away from what you thought was solid, what you thought was yours. And now you're realizing like, okay, I do have to do this. I'm going to go solo. I'm going to, I'm going to choose to go solo dolo. For others, it's a new start, a new beginning to something that has already been in existence, something that's already been created. And again, that storm helps to create the balance and now you can see the light and now it's like, let's do this journey together. So it's really interesting to see how this will show up in your life, but regardless, you don't wanna force it, you don't wanna push it, you don't want to go out with a pole in the middle of a storm and be like, come at me storm, and then you get struck by lightning. That's not cool, that's not something that's <laughs> good for anybody. Um, yeah, you just, you truly want to trust. You want to trust your feelings. You want to trust where you're getting pulled. Um, Friday, Friday through Sunday, we see spark. We're seeing loneliness. And when we see this card, basically what it's saying is being in a space where you are comfortable being by yourself. You're comfortable being alone. You're comfortable, like even if you're in a relationship, there's a lot of people who kind of feel lonely within that, or maybe they are not connecting with their partner in the way that they wish to. Um, or maybe they're not connecting with themselves. Maybe they feel separate from their self, from themselves. So there's a lot of that. So it's kind of like, oh, quiet time. So that's another card. Um, be gentle with yourself came through. Then we're seeing um, the three of cups, the temperance card, and also the death card. And basically what, and then fertile new valley and flowing and evolving. Now, flowing and evolving is something that I kind of want to start off with because with the temperance card, it really is flowing from one cup to the next and you're trying to create the right balance. You can't do anything extreme because remember, the overarching energy of this week is all about sensitivity. So much of us are in a space where we are in a heightened space of sensitivity. So that means we have to be very careful and mindful of the music that we're listening to. How does it make us feel? The people that are around us, the work that it is that we're doing, does it support you know, how I feel, is it building towards this, this light that I feel for my life, this vision that is that I'm seeing for my life, um, the relationships that are around me, my friends, even my best friends or my family, does me giving to them or me receiving from them, is that, is, if I'm in a sensitive space right now, is that something that I should be receiving or is that something that I should be having around me? And if not, do I need to disconnect myself from it? Is that what needs to be transformed? So that's what I'm seeing at the end of this week is this quiet time, this quiet space is helping you, even though it might feel lonely, even though it might feel isolating, it's sparking a lot of things. It's sparking a lot of like passion within you to, to know, okay, these are the next steps. This is what is the next stage in my journey. Why the next stage in your, in your journey? Because the death card is here. And then also it's like, okay, well, these are the people that are around me, you know, or this is the energy that's around me. That's another thing too. It's like, if you have party energy, if you have party vibes, you want to make sure that if, if it's moderation, maybe the music or alcohol or food that you're eating when you're out with your friends, if it's a lot of fried food, it's clogging you up. It's bringing your energy down. It's making your energy very dense. So you have to be, if, if we're in a state, heightened sense of sensitivity during this week, then you want to be so mindful and that's probably what's making you feel alone and isolated is because your friend's vibration is different than your vibration. So what your friends are doing or what your family is doing or what your partner is doing is not something that vibes with you at this current moment. And that's probably why you need to, to take some time. It's not a detriment to the relationship. You might feel lonely in it, but when you find loneliness, you find the ability to find yourself. You, you find the ability to find truth for yourself. And this is what makes me feel good. This is what doesn't make me feel good. And then bringing back to your relationship or bringing it back to your job or whatever. Um, and that's a part of, again, this flowing and evolving. It's not forcing, it's flowing. We are evolving, we're moving into this next fertile role and we keep seeing this next, this next fresh journey, this next fresh start. Now, what is it that's working against us? We have the moonlight, we see self-love, the guardian, Prayer will help the situation. The Emperor, King of Swords, Six of Wands. Palm, apply past lessons and happiness at hand. So for so many of you guys, I'm almost getting this like, this energy of like, um, no, 
Like it's very much like this is the way and this is the only way. I'm going to stay rigid in this and my feelings, I, I'm not even going to call them valid. I'm going to question them because this makes sense. The reality is, is that where you are getting pulled to go and where you're intuitively feeling, it's not a logical, it cannot be logically explained. And even if it cannot be logically explained, it's still yours. It's a gift given to you by God. It's given to you by the divine. It's intuitively given to you. It's not something that can be, you know, thought out and articulated on paper or with word. It's something that is felt. And I'm really seeing, like, if you look back at your past, if you look back at your journey, you will learn, you will see how when you follow your intuition and you followed your sensitivity, it never led you astray. It never fucked you up. And if it hasn't led you astray in the past, when you followed your intuition, following your heart, following your guide, following your, following your, you know, the message of the divine or the signs, if it hasn't led you astray then, it's not going to lead you astray now. So what I'm seeing is like this guardian energy of you trying to protect yourself, of you trying to protect others, that can sometimes be logically explained, but go into your intuition and follow that instead of questioning it, because you will find success with that. When you learn to follow your intuition and you learn to honor your feelings, your vibes, and what doesn't even logically make sense, that is the biggest act of self-love. That is the biggest act of love to the divine because you're trusting in yourself, you're trusting in the divine energy within you, and you're trusting in spirit. So, I mean, it's like the ultimate act of faith. It's like reckless, I choose you. Like, I so choose you. I choose this voice. I choose this path. The world can tell me no, but I'm still going to do it regardless. We see this time and time with the Ascended Masters. It was the whole world had this vision, this path, this direction that they were taking, and it was this one person that was moving from their heart that said, no, what we're doing and how we're doing this is wrong. And when I speak up and when I tell you how I feel, I can change the course of direction for myself, but also generations to come. And that's what I'm seeing as an obstacle is this logical mindset. This, this is, I'm rigid in my way. I'm rigid in this. I can only define it and clearly define it within this. Like it's time for you to go back into your intuition again and move from your heart. What is supporting us coming apart? Our feelings. Start delegating. Ask Archangel Michael to help you with the situation. Again, this is not you doing this by yourself. This is you calling for help. And then I'm seeing the Five of Cups. I'm seeing the Knight of Wands and the Queen of Wands. And then also persist in your pursuits in time of new birth. Now, there's a lot of new energy here. Ooh, I knocked it down. But we're back. <laughs> you thought. Okay, so what I'm seeing is as things are coming apart and as things are separating, obviously you're going to get triggered. Obviously, you're going to have some disappointment. Obviously, you're going to have some, am I right? Am I good? The Queen of Wands, she is not known for her, her emotions. She's known for her confidence. She's known for her ability to believe in herself, to trust in herself, and to take those steps according. Um, what's working is that I'm actually seeing you guys separate and split from these things that tested you. That, I think that that's actually what's kind of testing us. It's like your ability to kind of stand alone, stand solid. But at the same time, Ask for help from your angels. Ask for help from others. Maybe you have to separate from your friends and tr go on a new journey and ask for help from your coworkers through, throughout this. There's, for everyone, these readings are general, so for everyone it's different. But throughout this, it's you're learning new space. You're, you're learning new aspects of yourself. You're learning new, new traits along your journey. And there are people that are not from your past who are going to teach you better than the people from your past could ever do because that's from your past and they, they have a different mindset. They're a different vibration. So what's working for us is actually separating and splitting from this old mindset, this old lifestyle, this old way of doing things and those feelings that get triggered because when you go through it and if you feel disappointment, if you feel frustrated, it's showing you like be patient with yourself. You have the patience to be patient with yourself and also you have what it takes to go through this regardless of it feeling good or bad. You're dedicated, you're determined, you're not going to give up and this is coming from this vision that you have, this pull that you're, that you're feeling, okay? So you guys, that's what it is that I'm seeing for this week as a whole. Again, I'm really curious to hear and see what it is that you're experiencing. Um, I didn't put a whole lot of astrological messages within this because I'm going to write about them on Bahati Life blog. So if you're not, if you don't have, um, if you haven't checked out my blog, then on the website, then I want to encourage you to do that this week because I'm going to break it down for you 
um, word for word. I've been feeling a lot of writing lately. I've been doing that every day, part of my ritual for the last month. It's been giving me so much and I feel like I can give to you guys. But um, yeah, it's just another way for you guys to, to receive these messages and for you to feel good and for you to you know be a part of this journey and to go along your journey in the way that you will. Um, so yeah, there isn't, I know some of you guys get disappointed when I don't talk so much about astrology, especially since we're not doing the Astro Live chats on Monday anymore, but it'll be up for you on the Bahati Life blog, as I said, but in the meantime, honestly, I'm sending you guys so much love and I thank you so much for being really patient with me and I thank you so much for, you know, looking for me, for looking for these messages, for commenting, for sharing your experiences, because as I'm reading them, they resonate with me, they resonate they resonate with my friends. They resonate as truth in our conversation. And we're learning so much from each other. And for that, I'm so grateful. So for those of you guys who are brand new to the YouTube channel, I welcome you. And I want to invite you to subscribe. Um, and for those of you guys who are old friends, thank you again for being with me again for another video. And that's all I got to say. So I'm going to sign off. Sending you all my love. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.